Hello, everybody. Uh, today I'm talking about November 2019 and uh, what you can expect from it and how each of your signs get affected by it. The important thing to remember about uh, November is that Jupiter will finally go into Sagittarius. So this is one of the most important events of the year because it has changed signs and it does once a year, Jupiter changes signs. And then uh, there are lots of other aspects happening. So I'm going to explain uh, what to expect and how to deal with it. Hello, I'm Komela Sutton, and we are continuing the exploration of uh, Vedic astrology. If you are new to the channel, do remember to subscribe. If you've been watching and not subscribing, it would be wonderful if you subscribe and be part of my uh, community. I would love you to be there. Now, there's some new things I tried out last week. Now, was that uh, when Jupiter moves into the new sign, he also moves into a new nakshatra, Mula. So I did nakshatra-based predictions for Jupiter. And in future, for uh, Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, and Saturn, I will be doing uh, nakshatra-based predictions when they change signs. The other planets don't uh, change uh, nakshatra so often uh, and all those predictions will be from the moon nakshatra and for other predictions uh, monthly and other faster moving planets it will be rashi or sign based predictions like i've been doing so far so you'll get both of them and not miss out on anything uh, so that is the great thing so in november we have uh, five uh, major aspects that we have to think about. And the first one is, of course, that Jupiter changes signs. And Jupiter did come for a little while in uh, April, uh, late March, early April. It came into uh, Sagittarius and then it went back again. So some of the things that were left undone are now finally getting into swing of things. So Jupiter will come on 4th of November into Sagittarius and remain there uh, for uh, quite a few months. Then it'll retrograde back to Capricorn, go back to Sagittarius till November 2020. Now I made three videos for Jupiter. Uh, one just about Jupiter, one about how it affects your signs, and third one about how it affects your nakshatras. So I'm putting a link at the top that you can uh, check it out. And um, I'll also put a link uh, in the description so that you don't miss these out. But basically, uh, this is an event. And as Jupiter moves into uh Sagittarius, it is going to be Gandanta uh, till 8th of November. It starts Gandanta on 31st of October in Scorpio, then 4th of November it moves signs and then it will be Gandanta till 8th of November. So this is an unsettled atmosphere uh, for everybody. And uh, generally when uh, Jupiter moves into Sagittarius, it's moving from a Tamasic, a fixed energy of Scorpio to Sattvic pure energy of Sagittarius. And in order to uh, express that, it is important to, for some change to take place. So you'll see that the world itself, there are changes taking place. They won't be totally fixed in stone just now. And Jupiter's main advantage is that Jupiter is not aggressive planet. So whatever change he brings, he will be positive about it. Jupiter's also will be in uh, Mahapursha Yoga, 
uh, uh, Hamsa Mahapursha Yoga for uh, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, Sagittarius who've been having a tough time will uh, slowly find Jupiter's energy more productive for them. So as I said, I have made all these videos for you to check out. Uh, then the second most interesting factor of November is the transit of Mercury. Now, this is a, a special term given by astronomers when Mercury, from the point of view of Earth, goes ahead of the sun. So that means that when we are observing it from Earth, Mercury is going ahead of the sun. Mercury is uh, usually when it retrogrades, it will go behind the sun. So we can't see it. But this time it's a rare, unusual retrograde for Mercury. Uh, so Mercury starts the month in uh, Scorpio, then it uh, goes back to Libra and remains in Libra from 6th of November. And on 11th of November, it experiences the transit of uh, uh, Mercury. And I've made a separate video for this as well. And you can uh, listen to that. And the link is again in above here and in the description. So you'll get a double link so that you can uh, see what that uh, video is about. And also the uh, special transit. You can't watch it by the naked eye, but there are certain sites online, NASA site that you can see the transit. Uh, so Mercury is retrograde from uh, 1st to 20th of um, November. So you have to watch what you say, watch your appointments. They can be uh, some, uh, uh, you know, mixed uh, messages going on. You may say something, people may hear something else. So that is important to watch out for. Then uh, Mars is doing uh, some very unusual behavior in November. It's not necessarily negative, but some of you may experience it negative. I haven't done the video for Mars as yet, but uh, I will do one so you can see that. But from uh, 10th of uh, November, Mars goes into Libra. But before that, from 1st to 10th of November, now, Mars is in Virgo. Now, uh, up to 6th of November, Mercury is in um, uh, Scorpio. So uh, I had already made a video about Mercury, Mars. So Mars is exchanging signs with Mercury and it is, uh, you know, Parivartana. And then it goes into Scorpio and Venus is in Libra and it is exchanging signs with Venus. So uh, I would say that it's hard to make up your mind what to do, what action to take. Uh, you're always going back, forward, um, you know, other influences are there. So it's not like Mars. You see, Mars is a warrior. He has a certain destination in mind. He's disciplined. He focuses. So when Mars is doing these oddball things, then uh, there is some uh, difficulty in learning how to deal with it. So Sun is uh, going to be in Libra, debilitated, 1st to 16th of November, after 16th November, it moves into Scorpio. Now, what is their sun's debilitation in uh, Libra? The people in power not behaving properly, uh, although they, you will see a slight change because sun is moved away from its exact debilitation point, which takes place in uh, uh, you know, October, so it's not in its debilitation energy. Uh, but yet you'll see that uh, in Libra, this is not the best energy for the sun. And therefore, when it goes into Scorpio on 16th of November, it will be empowered, strong. And uh, uh, so how does it affect you? Uh, Aries. Now, Aries will be most indecisive this month because uh, the month starts with Mars, Parivartana with Virgo, and uh, that is, uh, you know, sixth and eighth house, and then uh, Mars, Parivartana after 10th of November with Libra, 
and Veena. So uh, this is not uh, a person who can decide. Too many options are available to you. Uh, you are not sure uh, what to do, but you feel happy about it. You are not unhappy because Jupiter uh, is aspecting your ascendant. Jupiter's in the ninth house. It's giving you some positive feedback and uh, that is a great energy for you. Uh, Taurus, uh, of course, you know, still Saturn is in your eighth house. It isn't the easiest energy for Taurus. Uh, Jupiter also comes into the eighth house and Ketu is also in the eighth house. So uh, Taurus likes stability and uh, this uh, next few months, not so stable for you because of a gathering of planets into Sagittarius, which is your eighth house. Now, Venus itself will be in um, Scorpio and then goes into Sagittarius, again, also going into the eighth house. So uh, plus it is in Parivartana Yoga, exchanging signs with Mars. So I would say that the next uh, few months, uh, you know, don't try to make changes. Little traveling is good for you because that is a natural unsettling energy. But things are not uh, as they seem to be. There are undercurrents happening and you yourself feel uh, the need for change. So I would be restrained and careful over the next month, uh, two months actually. Uh, then we go to... Um, Gemini and uh, for Gemini is the first uh, sign which is going to be experiencing the Mahapursha Yoga. Uh, Jupiter comes into the seventh house, uh, Mahapursha Yoga, Hamsa Mahapursha Yoga brings strength, it improves relationships, uh, learns to um, calm Saturn and Ketu down because Jupiter is going to help them. Plus, uh, the uh, transit of Mercury is in front of the sun. So for a change, instead of the sun dominating you, you are dominating the sun. Your profile, who you are, is much stronger, much more visible. Mm, uh, so this is a good energy. The first few uh, days till 6th of November when uh, Mercury is exchanging with uh, Mars, uh, you have to be a bit careful in the sense that you may be being more impulsive and feel obstructed. Uh, when Mercury comes back to Libra, then things are much easier for you uh, for the rest of the uh, November. <clears throat> uh, Cancer, uh, Jupiter is in your sixth house. Uh, Saturn is in your sixth house. Uh, Ketu is in your sixth house. So a lot of hard work, a lot of responsibility. You feel always that you are, um, you know, can't work hard enough. I'm just trying to find the right word. You know, the more you work, the more you have to work. So it's better to put your head down, uh, do all the things that you need to do, and that will be uh, good for you. Uh, secondly, when this uh, Venus, uh, Mars Parivartana takes place, this is a positive Parivartana yoga for you uh, between uh, fourth and fifth house ruler. And uh, that is there till 20th of uh, November from uh, 10th to 20th November. So uh, make full use of it. It may make you travel, uh, more connection with children, with your own creativity. Um, but for actually cancer, uh, they have to watch the moon sign. And it's not possible for me in the um, uh, this channel to do daily moon sign uh, um, information. So if you are... Uh, know your astrology, you should watch where the moon is and you will feel uh, very empowered by dealing with the moon transits as well. But these are the big transits that I'm talking about. As far as Leo is concerned, because till the 16th of November, ascendant ruler is debilitated. So I would not take any decisions up to 16th of November. I'd wait 
After that, when uh, sun goes into Scorpio, that is a power position for you, much better, much uh, nicer. So it's a tale of two halves. So first half, sun and Libra, where you're trying to find uh, friends and balance your energy and not confident and uh, able to do things yourself. And then uh, secondly, uh, the uh, difficulty of... Um, uh, you know, confidence. Whereas after 16 November, you feel confident, the energy returns, you'll be way more uh, productive. And Jupiter, the transit going into your fifth house, that's a very good change, a very positive energy for you. <clears throat> it starts aspecting either your ascendant or moon sign, depending on what uh, point of view you are taking. Uh, Virgo, again, Virgo, Jupiter is really good for you. Uh, he's going to uh, bring the Hamsa Mahapursha Yoga for you for the whole, most of the year. Plus, even when Jupiter goes into Capricorn, it's going into your fifth house. So this is a good Jupiter transit. It can give you happiness, home. Uh, many of the uh, Virgos I'm talking about, thinking about changing home or improving home improvement. So that would be a good energy to do. Plus Jupiter aspects your 10th house. So career opportunities are there as well. And Mercury, uh, the transit of Mercury goes in front of the sun. So you are empowered this month. This is a rare transit. As I told you, I made a video about it. Libra is concerned. Uh, Venus is um, uh, in Parivartana Yoga with Mars. And uh, they are also uh, indecisive uh, and uh, go through Gandanta on the 20th of November. So Gandanta, you must always watch out for it. I'm emphasizing it because these are not long timings and especially when your ascendant lord or moon lord is going through the Gandanta, you don't feel very empowered at that particular stage. So if you watch out for the Gandanta, you are in a much better position and then the Jupiter coming into Sagittarius is your third house. It's about confidence and ideas and creativity. Uh, so it's a nice uh, energy for you. Scorpio, uh, you see, uh, Mars is going into your 12th house. So for Scorpio, especially after the 10th of uh, uh, November, uh, your ascendant ruler is in the 12th house. So effort you're making, you're not getting any reward for it. And then uh, Venus, your 12th house ruler is in the ascendant and they are exchanging signs till the 20th. But Mars remains in the 12th house for a long time. Uh, so uh, you feel very constrained because on the other side, although Jupiter has gone into the second house of finances, um, Saturn and Ketu are there. So you feel restricted uh, between spending and earning money or saving money. So it is important for you to be very uh, careful from spending, abstain from wasteful expenses, Efforts you make may not get the reward, but efforts are always rewarded at some later stage. So uh, don't worry about if you're doing something and not getting the returns just now. As moves into Scorpio, uh, Saturn moves out of Sagittarius. There's a lot of opportunity for you ahead. So right now, uh, keep uh, tightness on your purse strings. I think that is the most important thing. Uh, Sagittarius, uh, welcoming Jupiter uh, from uh, 4th to 8th of November or from 1st to 8th of November, Jupiter is in Gandanta zone. So you are being aware that it is an unsettled energy. And as new planets come in, uh, they bring their positive aspect to you. And you are the one who will benefit the most from uh, Jupiter's transit in Sagittarius. It is going to be the Hamsa Mahapursha Yoga. However, it will take some time for it to manifest. In my um, 
video on Jupiter and Sagittarius, I have said that uh, Jupiter will need some time before uh, he will fully give his results. So uh, at this stage also, the 26th of uh, December eclipse is happening, lots of plannings gathering in Sagittarius. So one of the things that you have to be aware is a lot of outside influences, people telling you what to do, what not to do. Uh, so you have to be uh, a bit cautious of whose advice are you going to take. Uh, so if you are confused, best to let it be. Allow yourself uh, to experience this transit. It will bring many opportunities for you and wait till uh, January when uh, things will become more clearer for you after the eclipse. Uh, Capricorn, <clears throat> uh, Jupiter goes into your 12th house. Saturn is there, Ketu is there. The eclipse is going to be in your 12th house. So Capricorn and expenses are the key thing to watch out for. Don't waste your money. Uh, don't waste your effort. Of course, you know, you do good effort. By wasting your effort, I mean is that be conscious that you are uh, aware of what you're putting into. Because if you're just wastefully doing your effort and not getting results, uh, and then that is no good for you. Uh, similarly, regarding money, finances, all the energies in your 12th house. So uh, you are uh, uh, being led to make some useless, wasteful expenses and uh, keeping a tight lid on it is good. You see, generally when Jupiter goes into the 12th house, he's very expansive and he wants to do more and he wants to spend on spiritual things, on uh, alternative things. But, uh, you know, Saturn is also there, Ketu is also there. So, uh, and uh, for you, uh, Second Lord, which is the uh, house that saves your money is also there in the 12th. Saturn is your second lord. So this is a important message for you till Saturn goes into Capricorn in January. So be very tight. Uh, Mars, uh, Venus are interacting and creating uh, 10th, 11th house uh, aspect between 10th and 20th of November. That is good. There can be money coming in. It's not that you're not earning money, but your earning and spending is uh, not at par. The expenses are way more. Uh, so what is coming in, the, what is going out is more. So what I advise is that take your time uh, uh, to spend or be tight on the spending because usually these transits bring some unexpected energy. So then you're prepared for it. If you are spending wastefully and then the unexpected energy comes and you have to take that or you have to become very tight, it's much more of a problem. For Aquarius, uh, Jupiter moves into the 11th house. So there's profit to be made, uh, positive energy. Mars, Venus are interacting between 9th and 10th house. So that is very nice. 9th house of good luck, 10th of career. Uh, so uh, they are also 10th to 20th, creating a positive energy for you. Saturn is in your 11th house, Ketu. So multiple sources of income coming your way. And Jupiter rules your two houses of money, second and 11th. So this is a good time to look for more opportunities regarding earning, uh, regarding increasing your um, capacity to earn. If you get opportunities, then take those. Also, uh, think about saving because this type of opportunity, ascendant ruler and the 11th uh, was house ruler and uh, second house ruler together. So this is quite a key energy for you. Uh, so enjoy this energy. Uh, finally, Pisces again are experiencing the Hamsa Mahapurusha Yoga. Um, great opportunity professionally for you because Jupiter is your Lagna Lord in the 10th house and creating a, a major opportunity for you, for high profile, for people appreciating you. 
and uh, uh, you know so enjoy that energy uh, although mars venus their combination from 10th to 20th is 9th 8th house lord they are not creating the best energy and mars being in the 8th house also of some unexpected uh, event or energy so to be uh, conscious of it but when the ascendant ruler is strong you are able to manage it just watch out for the gandanta till 8th of uh, november and things will be fine so that is it for today thank you very much i really appreciate your uh, following me and just to remind you that you can see these predictions from the uh, moon sign and the ascendant uh, and also uh, please do remember to uh, subscribe and to share with people i do appreciate you a lot thank you very much